Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to cover what is TestNG and why we call it TestNG Web Framework and the key features of the TestNG that we will cover one by one in the video. So let us start. What is TestNG? So TestNG is nothing but the testing framework written in Java that provides some certain class that we will use in our project to execute our test case and run parallelly. So it provides a lot of features that we will discuss later in this video. So the second thing, it comes in a compressed file like jar file with the format like testng. 7.7.1.jar which is the latest jar file so that we will use in our project in the subsequent video so now let's move to the step one where we call it test ng is a framework so framework means what so we got confused with the library and framework interchangeably so we will discuss each topic here so framework is basically provides the set of rules and guidelines how to use that library. So using that li library, we need to follow some rules and standards and the structure in which we need to create the project. And obviously it has a library itself that inbuilt class we are going to use in our project. And that's why we said test ng is a framework, not a library. And what is library means? So library is basically provides a set of functionality that you can use in your application. So basically it's not gives you the, the guideline and standard and the structure to follow. It simply says that is the library where a lot of functionality there you can use in your project by calling that class method and implement it. So that's the basic difference between framework and library. So again, I am reiterating framework where we have to follow some guidelines uh, some structure standards to create a project and use the internal library so that's the basic difference in library we simply import and use class and its function directly so now let's move to the second point so test ng is an open source tool it's completely license free so you can use and it is used to automate web application, mobile application, and desktop application. The third point, test ng provides an important feature that makes it powerful, like no object creation required for Java classes. It internally takes care by test ng. What does it mean? So let's open the class and discuss each feature one by one. So let's say we have a class called mobile flow. So taking an example of e-commerce where we first sign up, that is our sign up method. Then we log in with the valid credential. Then what we do, we select a mobile category, for example, and then add to cart and so on. So these are the method where we have written some automation script. So call this method one by one. Let's say first we need to call sign up, then log in then select mobile category and then add to cart these are the actual flow so now we need to create a main method where we need to initialize the object of this class which is a mobile flow m is equal to new mobile flow then calling each method with the variable let's say m dot sign up first then login then select mobile category then add to cart so executing these method we need to create a main method then initialize the object at line 23 then calling all the method in a sequential order so what test ng say no need to create this main method and initializing the objects so i am deleting it it says let it be i will take care of everything like creating a main method and calling each method so so how it does call so at the rate test this is the annotation that we need to import from the test ng library and as i said library which means it's a framework but we interchangeably using those words so now you can see i 
put the annotation this is the annotation writing any annotation which is basically using at the rate at the starting and the class name of that library package so that is how we annotate so this step is called annotation so basically we are labeling this method treat it as a test method so in that case no need to create a main and call this method the test ng will do it itself so how easy it is now let's move to the so uh, now you can understand the first point no object creation required for java class it internally take care by test ng the second point that test configuration using simple annotation that we saw here in this case where we use the at the rate test annotation and that test class is basically imported from the test ng framework library so now let's move to the step number three which is a c part parallel testing so you can see if we write a n number of uh, flow end-to-end -end flow like mobile flow uh, apparel flow watch flow laptop flow so those are the test cases end-to-end -end test cases that we want to execute parallelly so in that case you need to write your own logic and your own class to execute these end-to-end -end test case but using test ng no need to write anything the test ng itself provides some configuration with ease that you can use and execute all the test classes parallel now it also provide data driven testing so what data driven testing means so let's say we have a sign up method where we are providing a user detail so to create a new user every time we need to provide a new user details so it will create a user credential through which we will log into this application so with the help of data driven feature we can test lower boundary and upper boundary of the same test case with different data set so test ng provide that capability as well the e point is flexible in grouping test case like end to end sanity and regression scenario so what does it mean let's say somebody from your team comes to you or your manager say uh, we want to execute only sanity test case in your suit so how will you figure it out so you have a let's say 100 test case in which only 20 test case belongs to the sanity so we can label those test case with the sanity keyword and if your manager comes tomorrow and say we want to execute a regression so the whole 100 test case belongs to the regression so by putting a label while automating we can call that regression and execute all the 100 test case that we will see in our subsequent video so now using test ng listener we can customize our test ng logic to implement our own logic so test ng also provide the listener let's say whatever your test case is executing so somebody listening to it what does it mean which means if test case executing either it's going to be pass fail or skip so capturing those record and keeping it in the html report those things is done by listener so let's say our test case is failing because of slowness in network so in that case we can improve or rewrite our listener logic if test case fail once please retry twice so that in case of network latency it may be fail first time but there is a there is a possibility it will pass in the second retry so uh, test ng provide that much of flexibility that you can overwrite the test ng logic according to your own convenience so now the fourth point is it also supports various types of testing including unit testing integration testing and functional testing so we as we discussed we can uh, write a unit test case integration test case and functional test case now the fifth point which is very important point so whatever the test case you have written and executed let's say parallelly so 
test ng is also generate HTML test report of the executed test case. That would be helpful for sharing to your team members and also help you in debugging the issue and identifying the failure reason. So that is really very helpful feature that we are going to explore in our subsequent videos. So I think we are good to go for the next subsequent video where we will discuss each topic in detail. Thank you everyone.